This is IMG Academy, and this might be one of the most insane tennis academies in the world. It's the academy of choice for 57 top ATP and WTA ranked players, five junior world number ones, and countless kids striving to achieve their goals. This academy is part of the number one ranked high school in the US, which boasts 15 different sports, including football, American football, basketball, and so many more. And this whole complex was recently sold for just over $1 billion. This insane academy, however, actually all started off with a tennis academy, where former world famous coach Nick Bollett coached 10 world number one players, including Agassi, Becker, Courier, Sharapova, the Williams sisters, among many others. So as soon as I got there, I actually got a tour of the facilities. We looked at the football, the golf, the American football pitch. It was massive. And you know, we're driving around in this golf buggy. It's taking 15 minutes to drive anywhere. It's honestly unlike anything I've ever seen. We went into the main players gym and this gym was unreal. It was kind of state of the art, everything, 25 squat racks. It had climbing machines, power plates, everything kind of in a dream that you'd put in a gym. The Tennis Academy was insane. It had 56 or 59 outdoor courts, nine indoor courts. It had clay, green clay, red clay. And, you know, I was really looking forward to getting going with the week, getting started. So on day one, I met the tennis coaches, the SNC coaches, Jason and Micah. Micah was super high energy. Fresh bats. I thought he brought such a good energy to every session, a very American energy. I loved it. Let's go, baby. Come on. And, you know, he was my kind of one-to-one -one coach throughout the week, which I found was a really great way of kind of taking someone like myself who obviously doesn't fit at the academy and putting me in that kind of professional environment. I had Jason for strength and conditioning. He was amazing. We did some a lot of work in the gym, which was actually shared with basketball, I think it was. There was some crazy tall guys in there over the week. I'm glad that tall guy's not in the gym today to make me look small. We worked together on three or four of the days in the week, just going through basic strength and conditioning stuff, a bit of plyos, speed, stuff in the gym, of course, as well. I even got to try out the 40-yard dash and basketball, trying to dunk a basketball. No, there's no way. So the structure of a day, it started off obviously of course with breakfast. You can always tell how good a breakfast is by how much fruit they have. And they have some decent fruit here. Then we took the 15 minute cart journey to the campus. I did a warm up, I had my strength and conditioning session with Jason, which was about an hour long usually. More of a warm up for the tennis, but I didn't really mind that. Then I had a tennis session with Micah. In the morning we were usually focusing on more kind of specific stuff. So you've got drills, two cross one line, stuff like that to get a rhythm. Specific shots that I wanted to work on, you know, specifically that forehand aggressive shot holding on the backhand side, which I've talked about in some of the other videos, what I'm working on, and of course a lot of serving. And then we would go back, have some lunch, come back again in the afternoon to the tennis academy and do an afternoon session mainly focused around points and you know, the point session was always a fun one playing with some of the junior players all the way up to some of the pros at the academy and I'll talk about that a little bit later on in the video but let's talk about kind of the whole way through the week what I got up to what I thought about it and why I think the academy was just different to the other academies I've been to also guys less than 50% of you that watched last week's video are actually subscribed so if you enjoy this content and want to see more of it go down there smash that subscribe button and let's get back to the video Monday was a day where we actually weren't really able to film. Then on Tuesday and Wednesday, we moved on to doing a proper day of training. I actually got the opportunity as well to hit with Jerry Shang, a very, very high level player, nearly pushing the top 100. He just beat Jordan Thompson in the Indian Wells, which was a huge win having come through qualities. So getting on the court with him for a session was honestly amazing. I'm going to be making a full video on my other channel, link down in the description about our training session. And there's going to be a video coming soon where I play some points against him, which is super exciting. Yeah, that session, he just had an unbelievable level. He was able to put the ball everywhere in the court and he just had such a focus on exactly what he wanted to do and how he wanted to do it. Which is honestly amazing from my perspective as well because I had to be so focused and so on it the whole session. Also that day, played with Micah on the indoor courts, again, working on some specific stuff, just really trying to fine tune my game. Going on to the rest of the week, I actually trained with Ray Sakamoto, a Japanese player. He actually won Australian Open Juniors. I think he's ranked world number two for juniors at the moment. And we had, I think, two or three training sessions, which was really fun. He's such a, a fun character to, to be around to play with. And we also filmed some points and content, so make sure to subscribe for that coming up soon. We did a lot of trading for the baseline. He had such a clean ball, you know, backhand to backhand line, forehand to forehand line, a lot of trading up and down the middle, of course, and then some kind of point specific drills here and there to kind of get the competitive juices flowing. But I felt that the vibe of all of those sessions was really good and you know there wasn't any kind of collisions between what they wanted to work on and what we wanted to work on. It was kind of 50-50, which I really liked. On the strength and conditioning side, on Tuesday I started off with Jason in the gym. We actually did some work mainly on just kind of injury prevention, starting off the week with kind of getting all of that stuff out of the way where you're really building a base for the week. You know, just a lot of stuff about kind of coordination, core work, scapular work, shoulders are obviously super important in tennis. The Wednesday we also worked on a little bit more plyometric stuff, so 
we were doing hurdles, stuff for the hips, which is super important. And I even tried out trying to dunk a tennis ball, which I was actually able to do, which I was pretty gassed with. And then I tried with a basketball and, you know, I failed. So I've got, I've got a little bit of improvement to go there. We also jumped out on the turf to kind of do some, some running, some movement stuff on there, which was really nice. I actually got the opportunity to go out on the turf and play some American football, which was fun. And towards the end of the week, I was pretty gassed. On the Friday, I did a session with Micah in the morning, just working again on some specific stuff. But, you know, I was pretty tired. I think I took a one minute lie on the floor halfway through that session because I was gone. And in the afternoon, I had a pretty light session with Ray to finish the week. I think that that was kind of the best way of not doing too much, but also at least getting on court and getting some work done. Also, guys, I've got some really exciting news for you. Over the last few months, me and my friend Damien have been developing a project. Let's go. Which we're finally releasing to you guys today. The path of a tennis player is often misunderstood. Yet, the true journey begins far from the public eye, where dreams are forged in silence and determination. They say it's impossible, that the road is too long, too tough. These are just echoes from those who've never dared to try. But what happens when you challenge the doubt? It's my first piece of kind of creator merch, hoodies and t-shirts. It's going to be only available for 72 hours, so time is limited, so get yourself one now. For every single person that purchases one and tags me on Instagram with them wearing the hoodie or the t-shirt, I'll give a shout out to your Instagram at the end of my next main channel video on Tennis Brothers. I appreciate every single one of you that does buy a t-shirt or a hoodie, of course. It helps to make these videos possible, to carry on the journey and to keep creating content for you guys, which is, of course, one of my biggest goals. What stood out to me at IMG Academy was not only the vibe. I think everyone was going you know, to relax, a great positive mindset, a great positive environment as well, of course. I felt like there was a real focus on every player, really trying to tend to kind of my needs of what I want to work on. So I really liked that kind of open structure at the IMG Academy. I felt that really prepared me for the week after. In summary of the week, I really felt that you know, I had a great time at the Academy. The weather held up, which was amazing. And honestly, I have to say it was my favorite training week I've ever had, especially at an Academy. I really, really enjoyed myself. Thank you to everyone that, that made the trip amazing for me that was there coaching. It was definitely exciting. I've got a lot of cool videos coming from this US trip and I'm really looking forward to, to kind of playing some tournaments out here as well. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Next week I'm going to be showing you what in-depth day in the life looks like at IMG Academy. So make sure you go down there and subscribe of course but also turn that little bell notification on so you're notified when the video comes out. It also helps for the YouTube algorithm to push the video out to more people so I'd really appreciate if you did that and I'll see you guys in the next video.